Kamikaze by Beatrice Garland presents a mother talking to her children about her own father, a kamikaze pilot. She explains how her father left at sunrise. He took some water and a samurai sword in the cockpit of his plane. He had a shaved head full of strong ideas and only enough fuel in the plane to go to his destination, not to return. He was going on a one-way journey into history, but halfway there the daughter imagines, when later telling her own children the story, the pilot must have looked down at the fishing boats and the beauty of nature. It must have reminded him of his own childhood, playing on the shore with his brothers whilst waiting for their father to come back from fishing, and with that in mind the kamikaze pilot turned the plane around and came back from his mission. Filled with shame at his actions, the pilot's wife never spoke to him again or even looked at him. Everyone treated him as shameful. His children also eventually learned to be silent, to treat him as if he wasn't there. This was not the man they had once known and loved. The pilot must have wondered whether Kamikaze death would have been better than this emotional death. This poem shows an inner conflict between the cultural, military and national expectation that he would commit suicide as a Kamikaze pilot and the pilot's own desire to return home. Now, this is just a quick recap for revision purposes. For the full analysis, see my video which I'll link at the end. Beatrice Garland was born in 1938 in Oxford and now works in the NHS as a clinician and teacher. If the conflict in the poem can be seen as the pull between national expectation versus personal conviction, we need to look for contrast in the poem, and a great place to start is with Garland's use of structure. On the one hand, the poem has a very tight structure. All of the seven stanzas are made up of six lines, and this tight structure can be seen to reflect the tight control of the military and the national expectation of what the pilots should do. But to contrast this tight control, the poem is written in free verse and contains numerous examples of enjambment. Free verse is poetry that does not rhyme, but follows the rhythms of everyday speech. Enjambment is where sentences flow onto separate lines and even separate stanzas, and we see both in kamikaze. The free verse and enjambment contrast the tight control we see in the length of the stanzas, and this freedom of expression reflects the freedom the pilot wants to have. The conflict between his personal thoughts and sense of national duty are reflected in Garland's contrasting use of structure in the poem. We can also read the poem as an exploration of the power of nature. Look at the description of the tuna, the dark prince, muscular, dangerous. Now, considering this is a poem about a kamikaze pilot, it's interesting that the most powerful character in the poem is the tuna fish. The metaphor dark prince, coupled with the adjectives muscular, dangerous, creates a threatening, intense, powerful image, and the poem's first full stop appears after this line, which signals its importance. We need to stop and think about it. The punctuation tells us to do this. So what is it all about? Well, despite the best efforts of the pilot, it's the tuna fish that is truly powerful in this poem. Perhaps the poet is suggesting that true power belongs to nature. Humanity's efforts are futile. Maybe it's this realisation that causes the pilot to turn around and return home. There's much more to the world than he perceives, and taking this even further, we can say that the message of this moment is the realisation of how minute and unimportant human life is when contrasted with the vast array of nature. A number of other poems in the Power and Conflict cluster focus on the power of nature too. We see this in Ozymandias, Tissue and Extract from the Prelude. In all of these poems, there's a sense that humanity thinks of itself as powerful, but nature proves itself to have the true power. Now, if you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I also interviewed Beatrice Garland, so make sure you check out that video. And thanks again for watching.